Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and this is the Road to the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games and I'll hunt for the best score of the Decathlon. If you like what you see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is F1 2019 Career Mode Road to Glory series with Williams Racing. It's episode number three. And we've gotten through most of the practice programs. One clear miss has been qualifying pace. I have very much found that race pace is good. Medium tires, full fuel load, I can run well. Put on the softs, turn up the fuel mode, put it on hot lap. Note about tires. Just bear in Not mind so we have to return the two most worn sets at the end of this session. They're gone forever at that point, so be careful how and when you use them, and don't waste any sets that you might need later on. Uh, the other thing I've discovered is fuel management. <clears throat> it's been really hard to have enough pace in the lap and save fuel. Main reason for that is this car is really, really bad on fuel consumption right now. So it's going to take some upgrades to be better there to be able to start getting purple in the fuel management option. But track climatization, almost perfect, all but one corner. Tire management was pretty good. Uh, time was the only thing that I was fighting on that one, but I was able to manage the tires and just get within the time. Fifth in the speed trap, 325.0 kilometers per hour. ERS was pretty good. You can see the red areas were the main ones where I actually just turned it up a little bit just to maintain the pace necessary. The rest of the lap we ran under green, so we easily got purple on that one. And like I said, race strategy was good. I, I had two really, really good laps, well, well under the time necessary, and tire wear was better than expected. So I've got race pace. But at this point, <laughs> looking at this, I'm probably going to qualify in last place. Being that I'm in the Williams, I wouldn't be looking at much better than about 17th or 18th anyway. Probably 19th with our pace. So I suppose it's not a big deal that I'm going to struggle through qualifying, but we'll deal accordingly. So this is uh, practice session three coming to an end. I'm really bad on, on my times right now. Actually, I'm not. So my qualifying pace still not that bad compared to everybody else but you can see it is dropping down as time goes on here uh, but i'm definitely faster than russell who even he is not at the bottom of the standings uh, but i only put in those few laps that was all the qualifying pace program that's all i ran for uh, practice session three as i did the other two practice sessions completing all the programs so we got all the 20 available resource the points. Has drawn to a close, so let's review our top three. Bottas, Leclerc, and Lewis Hamilton. What an incredible practice session. The fun doesn't stop here though. Join us again as the rest of the weekend unfolds. So we are at Bahrain. I do have it set up as one shot qualifying. I've still got it there after that first race. And I've done a series with one-shot qualifying before. I actually kind of enjoyed how that worked. In the long term, I do prefer the three qualifying sessions in the standard format. But I think for the series, one-shot qualifying, I think it's going to work. It's going to work out just fine. Now, I should have a good total of resource points available now. And before we get into qualifying, I think this is definitely the time to look in to see what kind of upgrades there are coming. That's 900 points that we have, and we could probably do a little bit with that. Okay, so before we get into qualifying, let's take a look. Weather forecast, clear, nighttime. It'll be a little bit cloudy during the race. Alright, so R&D, this was main reason 
I wanted to take a moment before we actually jump into the qualifying. You can see that we're still the slowest even after we had our first aero upgrade on the car for this race weekend. We're still well short in the chassis and aero department compared to everybody else. Right now the points I've invested have all been in the aero department. And we'll probably look to do more. Rear downforce would cost us 510. Ooh, that's peculiar how that's kind of in reverse order. Under nose, uh, turning veins, again, this all helps turn in a little bit better. And when your arrow is so bad, turning in a little bit better can go a long, long way with the car. Uh, so we might be going for this one. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So with our minor upgrades, it's going to be a 21% risk. I don't like that risk, but it, it, it's not as bad as it could be. So we'll, we'll spend 510 points on that. We've got 392 left. Efficiency is going to cost 1000 It's 700 for the next quality control perk to take that risk further away. I think we might stop after that third one. I think we do want to get one more. Uh, but we're still 300 points away from that, so that's going to be it for now. Just the one upgrade on the way. The one that was just added to the car is, again, to the turning veins. So we've already made one upgrade in that manner, and then we'll have one more coming. And we are now a little bit above Alfa Romeo for worst on the grid, but we're not worst, so yay, right? <laughs> Chassis, way behind everybody else on that one though. So we are gonna definitely need, I think after this upgrade that we just made in the Aero, I think we might need to turn our attention to the chassis for a little bit and make some improvements there because the car is heavy and lumbering throughout the track. Powertrain, we can't leave it alone forever, but powertrain is in good shape. Speed trap, we're, we're definitely up there compared to a lot of the other teams. Quick look, we're literally the only team to enter the second race with an upgrade, closing that gap a little bit to the back end of the field. That makes me happy. And with that, let's go ahead and get on to qualifying in Bahrain. I looked at the wear and tear in the car before. Uh, the ICE, the internal combustion engine, took the most wear and tear in the last race at 22 percent it's quite a bit of wear and tear uh, for just one race for the minimal amount of laps that we put on it but all the other parts are still looking really good down around 10 15 or under 10 percent wear so having just over 20 percent on the ICE it's a little worrying it means we'll have to switch it out sooner than expected barring qualifying is nearly upon us and the drivers look as if they're all geared up to go I expect we'll be getting underway very shortly. See that and I'm here, of desert course, haze in the air. What has turned out to be a very pleasant day indeed. No weather to interfere, no problems on the track, so absolutely no room for error. That's right, Crofty. It's looking good out there at the moment. Each team will have their own game plan for this session, and of course, once the cars leave the garage, they'll be under Pog Fermi conditions. So any last minute adjustments need to be done right here and now. Beyond that, it's all up to the driver. Who can keep their tires in the right temperature? Who can hit their apexes? No race fuel on board these days, of course. These are the fastest cars we've had in a long, long time. And it's right here in qualifying where they're at their absolute peak. Let's get started. Now, like I said, in practice, I really struggled with the car under these conditions, under these qualifying conditions. So as a result, I need to just buckle down and try to get in a clean lap and not actually push too hard. And if I get better than 20th, that's great. But I know that if I push the way I tried to push in practice on qualifying, I'm, I'm not used to the car in these type of conditions. 
and it would take a lot more laps to get used to it to put in a good qualifying. So I'll just suck it up and accept that I'm going to be starting from the back, but if I drive a little bit easier, I can at least prepare myself for the later end of the race because I want to start on the medium, so I want to get that nice, cl long, clean run in with that full fuel load, run them pretty much as long as they're going to go, and then that way I'll be on the softs under conditions similar to this, but hopefully not crazy pushing and just trying to drive to the end of the race in a clean sort of way. That's the idea anyway. We'll see if I can pull it off. There you go. The power unit. We're at 19% wear just from practice three. We're at 34% wear, really? No, that included practice. Gearbox, just 15. The practice gearbox at 23. There you go. That one's picked up, so the event gearbox looking a little bit better. That's in the car now. And I think we're ready to go to track. And away we go. One shot qualifying here in Bahrain. This is already my first one, is I have to break early for this turn. Otherwise, oh, that was such a bad exit. We have so much trouble making those tight turns compared to everybody else, as we do not have the downforce, we do not have the, the chassis. See, much cleaner, much closer through there, I lose so much time on that first turn. And the turn coming up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Your end got away from me a little bit there. See, here, it's so hard turning. I'm so much later on the gas than everybody else because we're still fighting the turn. This is the other turn that's a problem for this car. Real tight. Well off the pace. Said so with that full fuel load where it kind of slows everyone down and makes everybody feel heavier, we're okay. Race pace, decent. But those tightest turns are a real problem for this car. Oh, that is the first time I have done that. The entire weekend, not a single lap did I hit that curb, and that curb will send you around every time, and I know that from last year's game. <laughs> well, there goes our lap. I mean, we were already in last place, so it doesn't matter, and at least we didn't wreck. Charles Leclerc goes fastest, so that's going to put Charles Leclerc on pole, and not only am I in last but I put in a terrible lap. I'm missing all three of those corners, but that's my real concern is late race now, which is awkward because it's very different from what I'm used to. I struggle early in a race with traffic and then get better. As the race goes on, it's, the field spreads out a bit. And Sebastian Vettel. With qualifying wraps up, we now have our grid lineup for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. Interesting. Interesting qualifying session here with Leclerc, Verstappen, and Vettel, the top three. Hamilton does get onto row two at least. Gasly beats out Botas. And then Perez in the racing point is best of the rest. Russell manages P15, and I get that very, very poor. <laughs> poor qualifying. Uh, Lance Stroll with a 134 will be on the last row with me. Interesting that one racing point gets all, all the way up in 7th and one all the way down in 19th. That is quite the gap between them. I would imagine, though, that I will be racing Albon, Butler, maybe Russell. But I, I have a feeling I won't be seeing too many other cars in this race. Now, turn number one is crazy, crazy tight, which means it's going to really, really back up. So I'm going to try to get deep, deep, deep to the inside. Maybe I can overtake a few cars under braking, but... Turning is going to be a real issue for me if I'm on the inside. So maybe I need to try to cut to the outside if there's enough space to do that. So I'll have a look. I am going to kind of back off a little bit at the start just 
to, to have some clean air, a little more time to react so that I can avoid a collision in turn one because this is an absolute crazy turn one and then it'll open up pretty quick from there. But those three tightest turns on lap one, I expect some fireworks there and hopefully I can get through those three turns clean and that curb that I just touched in qualifying, I better stay off that curb for the entire race, which is so weird because in practice, I never went anywhere near that curb. I know better. Apparently you get me talking and the concentration level drops just enough. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see if I can keep that clean in the race. That was one of the toughest corners for me in F1 2018 because if you weren't tight to the curb, that corner was really hard to make. And if you touched the curb, you went around every time. It's a little bit easier here, a little bit easier. So I still haven't picked up another rival. I'll probably do that in the next race, but we are now two points behind Russell in the rivalry and that doesn't surprise me one bit as George Russell is an amazing driver as he shows week after week after week. In fact, last week in Austria, George Russell may not have noticed this, but George Russell beat a car other than his teammate on track. Now that car had a drive through penalty. That slowed him down. But if you think about the Williams and what its pace has been throughout the season, that wouldn't matter. Right? A drive through penalty costs a driver 15, 16 seconds. That's it. And yet he beat Kevin Magnuson out on track and was way ahead of Kubica. All right, well, we at least pick up 100 points. And we'll see if my teammate can put that kind of showing together in this race and we'll see Obviously, if I, I can get something session, going in this race happen from time to time try to make up for it in the race all right well, let's move straight on to things we're ready to roll I am excited for this race I feel like I'm much better on this track than Australia. Now, this was still one of my tougher tracks. Tonight, and I'm not just talking about the sand. Our brightest minds have thrust their brightest ideas into the spotlight of the Sakia circuit this evening as we look ahead once more to a Grand Prix that has thrilled us so consistently in the past. There's no shortage of passing opportunities around the 3.36 miles of the Bahrain International Circuit, with the best at Turn 1, of course, and then another soon into Turn 4. 15 corners here, 6 to the left and 9 to the right, and we could see one or two flat spots... Turn 10 is a tough one. Left -hander of turn 10. It's one of the toughest corners in all of Formula 1. Bahrain has showed us many times at the one past, of, though, Anthony Davidson, didn't say that the good strategy will only take you so far. Beyond that, you need good racecraft and you need good consistency. And a little bit of luck too, I'd say. This is one of those circuits where the safety car always seems to come out just at the right time to condense the field together and mix up the cars on different strategies. It's hard on brakes, it's tough on fuel, and the main overtaking opportunity is down into turn one, where it's easy to outbreak your opponent and potentially have a bit of argy-bargy as well. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole, edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Vettel, Gasly, Valtteri Bottas, and Perez, Ricardo, Weber, Norris, and Kevin Mann. Weber in eighth. What? Lewis Hamilton. They've taken a grid penalty. And Russell. Ooh, Hamilton all the way down to 13. Alexander With the penalty? Lance Stroll. And the Ooh, and Grosjean in 19. Out, so let's go down to the track. That actually puts two faster cars right in front of me. All the more reason to kind of hang back and keep, your keep eyes it clean. Open the run to turn one and keep it clean. We want to come out in one piece. Good luck. We're gonna go ahead and flip the strategy here. 
Looks like we were set for eight and six. I think I'd actually rather even go uh, possibly nine and six. We'll see what that's like because I feel better on the mediums than I do on the softs. Half a second slower. You know what, I, th I think it's worth it for me to put in nine laps on the medium and go long. I think that's what we'll set up. Now, fuel, fuel wasn't too bad here, but my car is really bad on the fuel. So only having a little bit of extra is not very helpful. And like I said, I don't mind going slow initially as we're in the back of the field. So we'll put in a little bit of extra, but we don't need a ton of extra. But if I'm ever going to pass anyone, I'm going to need to do it on the straights, not in the turns. Let's go a little bit higher here. Let's let's get up to 30 kilograms. There we go. <laughs> this is actually tempting, except for that's supposed to be seven seconds slower, really. The hard and the soft in five laps is a seven second difference. I suppose so. More than a second per lap. All right, well, that should get us ready to go. You can see we are in the dark under the lights, but you still have that desert haze. I am on the inside for turn one, but I'd like to be on the outside, so I don't think that I'm gonna necessarily push off the line. I might take a slow start, move to the outside, take that extra space, but it also depends on where that line's holding, because I would imagine that most of the cars are gonna try to get as wide as they can to give themselves a better run at turn number one. I'd rather kind of go wide on turn one and go around the outside, maybe break a little bit later and get a position or two that way. Duh, that sounds like a, a dumb, risky move. <laughs> but let's put up five red lights here in Bahrain and let's go racing. The lights are up. Really good start. A little bit of wheel spin though, sets me back. I do get to the outside and there is some space. Grosjean's gonna get in there. Just about keep it on track. But, I, oh, I can't turn, I can't turn. Dang it. Really slow on that turn. I thought I had scrubbed off enough speed. End up with a warning on the collision to go with it, but not a big deal. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, and I just took out my wing. Uh, that's what I get from looking at settings. So I'm not going to mess with that too much. Here we go. I should have been prepared for that. Hello, first few corners. These guys, yeah. Let's see how bunched up they are. I was talking about being ready for that, but I was thinking more along the lines of it not coming until the next corner. There's what I was expecting, as it's really bunched up here. And it'll bunch up here again for 9, now 10. Oh gosh, it's just so difficult to turn in on those three corners. Even trying to keep up, I'm having difficulty. Now the rest of the track, I make good pace. See, I've done race pace, but not quite this fuel load. There's the corner that gives me trouble in 2018 and hadn't given me any trouble in F1 2019 until qualifying. Just gotta stay off that curve. So it looks like Leclerc retains his starting spot on the grid. down. Gotta get down to medium. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, that's late. Uh 
Alright, well, I dropped back after that sequence of 8, 9, and 10. Let's see if I get better through there this time. I was really poor with a full fuel load last time. I thought I was going to be good for this run, but still not quite. Well, I didn't run with this much fuel on board. And these tight turns are even worse. And I'm way off pace on turn 10 at the, at the moment. Yeah, see, even this turn car just struggles to get through the corners. Field pulling away from me at the moment. Got a break earlier. Maybe do some lifting and coasting. Reserve some fuel for later. Looking better, feeling better, but have I given myself too much of a gap to work with? Find out. At least we're clean, other than my little turn two incident that we cleaned up. This is one of my most difficult turns, because even slowing down, I still have trouble getting around that corner. Ten, ten here as well. Uh, see, if I don't break early, if I break when it tells me to break, I overshoot the turn. 1, 8, and 10 are all that way. The rest of the turns, this car has enough, so it's it's the tight turns where we have the most trouble. I think most of the other cars are going flat out around that turn as well. Is that 12 or 13? Somebody's got an issue or is out. Ricardo out of the race. I'm already 13 seconds down. Dang. There he was to the inside. Clear of it. I'm in the 19th, so I at least will not finish in last. That's already the team objective met. Sometimes just having a clean race is enough when you're in the bad team. Remember, this isn't all me. Some of this is the car. The car, it's it is a Williams, but I'm clearly not at the pace, and my teammates clearly doing better than I am. So it's not all me. It's just mostly me. But the fuel load a little bit better now. It's not quite as full as it was. And that's allowing me to uh, pick it up. Let's let's just go ahead and do rich mix on the on the straightaways. I think for the next few laps, uh, burn up a little bit of that extra fuel because I'm, I'm clearly having just a bit of trouble with the weight of the car right now. This is definitely the best area for that as we have two long straightaways back to back. Gasly! 
Ashley's out now as well. No overtaking. There he is on the left. So, the former Red Bull driver and the man who took his seat both out of this race already. And I keep making passes all the way up to P18. Woo! Didn't you see they were on track passes, no? Ugh. A lot better. I didn't say that as I push too hard on the apex on that one, on the gas a little bit earlier. Run a little wide. But that is seven tenths of a second faster than what I've been running. I was too wide off of one. Now that the fuel's getting a little bit lighter, it's it's definitely helping. Those three turns that I've had so much trouble with here in the early laps, they're not easy. And they're never easy. Even to the end of the race, they will not be easy in this car, but they're a little easier than they were. And I'm starting to run the, the racing line a lot better now than I was. We need to push now. Set ERS deployment to overtake. ERS to overtake. So already lap six. Possible that we'll start seeing some action here soon with cars pitting. And there might be somebody who gets back into our run. We've got two laps. In fact, there you go. I'm ahead of a couple cars at the moment. And that is actually Sebastian Vettel right in front of me. That's how far we've come. Keep pushing for a little bit. See how our pace is for now. I've got one more lap that I'm planning to run here. Inside of me, it's Max versus Stabbing. I really need to back out, let him, let him through. I'm not racing him. I don't need to have a crash here. Broke early there. Yeah, see, he's flat out through this corner. I can't do flat out. See that red wrench that's shown up there? Ooh. Are you telling me I'm not within a second? Oh, freaking way too late there. Okay, this is my lap. I'm into P7 for now.
So, I'd be off the pace, but I'm not that far off the pace. Pretty much having a Williams sort of race. Oh, that is not the right button. I was trying to do the look behind me button. <laughs> Get right back where we were. Uh, how about right there on the exit? Oh, now I'm off the line. And now I don't have time to look behind me and I messed that up. Okay, now I actually need it. See who's behind me. It's Hamilton, and here he comes. He's got my inside. I've got to let him go because I've got to go pit. Oops! Wow, that's your brake assist. <laughs> I've never actually used the brake assist in this game before. I've always just done what I need to do. That was awkward. Release, release. All right, good stop. Two point two seconds. Look after these tires now. We want to finish the race on this. And we come out back in the last place, but mini map. Oh, there's cars still right there. Oh, come on. I told you, softs are not my friend in this game, on this track. Right away, turn one. Just in high and rich mix. I think I just want to run standard for a while. Theoretically, we're supposed to be faster, right? Not if I can't keep it clean. Well, it's now our teammate that we are chasing in P17, and he's on the mediums, so I should be faster. Should be faster than him. But can I get up there? We'll find out. <laughs> I certainly lost a lot of time on those first laps. I am just under nine seconds behind George Russell in P17. Regardless, even though I'm not beating anyone on track, the boss is going to consider it a good race as we are not in 20th. That turn in Mirabeau are the only ones, Mirabeau and Monaco are the only ones that I actually take a hand off the wheel in order to complete the turn. There's five laps of fuel remaining. Trying to early shift here, there's no point ruining my gearbox when I'm already in the back of the field. Off that time again soft tires too much grip coming in hotter it's supposed to be breaking later but then I'm having more trouble with those few key turns have trouble on the exit there same thing a pretty much flat out that time
I am closer. Eight seconds. Flat. I gained eight tenths of a second that lap. So it doesn't look pretty. It doesn't feel pretty. But it is better. But can I catch up eight more seconds in just a few laps? Not so sure about that. At least get him in sight. Uh, blame for that first and foremost. Can we get George Russell within our sight before the end of this race? Oof. Just about lost the rear end on that curve. Had a little too much curve there. And will somebody else have a problem and give me a chance to move up one more spot? Probably not. Just about keep it in rich mix the rest of the way here. Let's see what that gap's down to now. Oh, eight and a half. I lost half a second. It was six tenths off the pace. So, uh, I told you the car is part of it, but I'm the bigger part. And that, that half second was definitely on me, that lap. Up this time. Second up. Oop, a little early there on seventh gear. Again, I'm still trying to short shift and save the gearbox for another day when we're actually racing for something. That does make it a little bit harder to catch up to Russell, but only slightly. Much better lap. Much better lap. I was a second faster than my last lap, and I gained 1.2 seconds on George Russell there. But now I'm in the final two laps. So even if I gain a second per lap for the next two laps, do the math. We're still going to be five seconds behind. But can I get him in by sights? I would have settled for that a couple laps ago. I'll still settle for that now. It's five seconds close enough to get him within my sight. So slow through that corner. And 10 here. That's where I'm losing most of my time. I just can't turn. More curve than I wanted on that one. We're okay. Suppose one constellation did not get lapped. I do not see the leader coming. Final lap. Final lap of the race. It was a good lap, it was still two tenths off, but 6.4 seconds now is the gap, so I am continuing to close up. There's only one lap of fuel remaining. 
cleaning. Time through there the whole race. Started my braking a little bit late. Leclerc has hung on to win the race. So there you go. The rookie gets his first, uh, not rookie, sophomore driver. Rookie Ferrari driver gets his first career Grand Prix win here in just the second race of the season in Bahrain. And of course, you know, we've got that in real life as well. Apparently, I was still at 6.5. Just enough fuel left. I mean, that was good balance. I did finish in 18th. If I hadn't had such a bad first few laps, I still would have been in contention, and I probably could have beat my teammate. I lost way too much time in those first few laps before I settled down. So, the weight of the car, and especially in those three quarters that were already the most difficult, were just so hard to navigate in my car. And with that full, full, full fuel load, I struggled with it. But after that, pretty good race. Outside of corner two on lap one, the only significant mistake I made was instead of looking behind me, I hit flashback to see where Hamilton was. And a clean race after that. So I'll take it. I'll take a clean race. I mean, if you expected the Williams competing for points already, uh, you'd be sorely mistaken. Remember, the Williams in real life was nearly a lap behind everybody else, especially if their name was Robert Kubica, and that's whose seat I've taken, so I'm already out racing him. He's typically a minute, minute and a half behind Russell at the end of a race, while here... I finished five and a half, six Let's seconds behind. Let's see what effect this result has had on the driver's standings. Charles Leclerc's points today take him to the top of the championship standings. Some amazing talent out Botas on the track today. finishes second over Vettel. Hamilton in fourth, Verstappen fifth. It's got to be Lewis Hamilton. I mean, he pulled off some Hamilton started 13th after that today, penalty. By his standards. Let's move on to the constructors. The current championship leaders still hold top spot. But that I'll stroll that all the way up to 12. Meanwhile, Ferrari have improved their position. A strong weekend from them as they fight their way towards the top. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next. I think I've got the AI difficulty level set right, though. I mean, if you look at my best lap of the entire race, I'm um, less than four tenths better than George Russell. But consistently, over a whole race, he was six seconds better than I was. So I think I'm in that perfect happy zone. Just need to be a little more consistent because at my best I'm just a little bit better than these guys. That's right where I need to be. Look at the standings now. Leclerc sitting on 44 points after two races. Hamilton slips to second place with his teammate in third. Verstappen up to fourth. Vettel fifth. And Gasly in his native land of worst of the best. Recent rumors after Austria suggested that he is doing really poorly. They're trying to take the pressure off him a little bit to tell him that his ride is secured through the end of the season, but he needs to do better. He needs to hit reset. So kind of the threat of you're done at the end of the season if things don't get better, but you're safe for now. So relax a little bit, kid, but step it up and start driving a little better because that last race in Austria, he got lapped by Max Verstappen. He was ahead of him on lap one after Verstappen uh, hit the anti-stall at the start and dropped back down the order. He was side by side with Pierre Gasly. Same car! And yet Max Verstappen finished one full lap ahead of Pierre Gasly. 
a full lap. That is comparing apples to apples. And one apple was a lap behind the other apple. So there you go. Constructors, Mercedes on top, Ferrari in second, Red Bull slips down to third, Renault, best of the rest right now. That's going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. And remember, I'm aiming for the best of the best. So if you're ready to join me on my journey, hit subscribe. And tune in next time on my Road to the Record. Bye for now.